evening everyone welcome to our just before you go to bed it's a program designed to teach you how to fight a spiritual battle program designed to teach you to know how your soul your spirit can pant after god and it's a program orchestrated by god to give you confidence that you never have before, before you go to bed. But tonight, I will make some, some statement that will uh, bring a revolution in your mind. It is going to be a revelation from me, but to you, it will be an information that will bring transformation in you. To walk out wherever that the enemy have dumped you or to walk out from every repeated spiritual battle and i'm gonna show you something that we have been reading bible since we have been reading bible since but that have not been discovered so let's pray Internal Rock of Ages, tonight we ask for reveal word. Jesus, be revealed and let the believers in you be unveiled. Let everyone here today receive your word as it is. That they can be able effectively confront and conquer repeated spiritual battle in their life. Thank you because I know that you are God that have never changed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. Welcome once again for joining Tonight, I am teaching on how to effectively confront and conquer repeated spiritual battle. Repeated spiritual battle. Please, you can write it down. How to effectively confront and conquer repeated spiritual battle you know when i was um, trying to put this message together this i know of this scripture years ago i can't remember when i read this scripture and the scripture was like an eye opener to me and all of a sudden the scripture run back to my mind i mean it's, it is more than 15 years. I will tell you. It's more than 15 years. I, I knew that particular scripture. I read that particular scripture. I saw that particular scripture. Something like around 2024. That was when we used reading Bible as a competition. That's when, when you get born again. The first thing we'll do is we'll compete. How to read Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We are a group of us then. All we do is to read Bible from Genesis to Revelation. In a year, we're trying to read Genesis to Revelation at least four times. That is when we were newly born again, but not now. I mean, born again right now. I mean, it's, something is very, very wrong. Born again right now, something is very, very wrong. But this is a scripture that I remember. I read 2004. That was my six times of reading the script, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That was when I marked that book. Today, that scripture came to my mind. And I want to look at that scripture. And I want you to know something. The reason why I titled this message, how to confront effectively. How to effectively confront and conquer repeated spiritual battle. Please follow me. 
Number one is this, that the devil have never lose hope concerning you. <laughs> Get this very well. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for joining. The devil have never lose hope concerning you. And that is the reason why, you see, he throw what? Stones. He throw problems at you to cause you to backslide that others will not come to church. That is the reason why that the church needs to be sensitive when a sister or a brother make mistake in church. Please, let us be rushing to condemn, but let us try as much as we can to restore that brother because the devil is looking for one thing, and that is one thing I'm going to show you right now before we go to this message. If I can't finish it today, I will go on part two of it by tomorrow. So if you have your Bible, I want you to take your pen, underline this the book of John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. But before we read this John chapter 12, I want to show you something. In John chapter 11, which everybody knows. John chapter 11. And I am reading from verse 38. John eleven thirty-eight, 38. And Jesus therefore again grown in himself. Come to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha said, Martha the sister of him that was dead say unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he has been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Jesus said, unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou would have believed, thou should have seen the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou always hear me, and I know that thou hearest always because of the people. Which stand by, I say it, that, that, that they may believe, that they may believe. I want you to underline this, because your belief system is causing problem somewhere. What you, that you believe that Jesus is Lord. You believe that Jesus has saved people. If you know the problem he is causing in the land, let me tell you, you will not know. If you know the problem is causing in the kingdom of darkness, you will never know. If you know the problem is causing in the covens of the enemy, just that you gave your life to Christ. Why? They know. When you give your life to Christ, they know that when your life starts speaking of testimony, Others will come. The reason why I start from this verse 11, I start from chapter 11, from verse 39, because I want to clarify it. And Jesus said, And he cried with a loud voice, and said, With a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound, bound on his foot with a grave cloth, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, Lose him and let, the, let him go. Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. Okay? Let me show you what God remind me today. That is the reason why sometimes you see believers making some mistake that cause others not to come to church. I am not telling you to support a sin. But when your sister make a mistake, take your sister very close to you. Talk to your sister. Restore your sister back. Encourage her. That is why I still talk to people. God did not give you the money. God did not bless you for you and your family alone. God bless you that you be a blessing to others. God bless you that you be a blessing to generation. If your sister is lacking, and because of that, that is why your sister wants to compromise. Sister, if he tells you to spend your last card, spend it, and you will see how God is going to change your life. You will see how God will remember you. Let us be brother's keeper. Look at what I'm going to show you now. 
John chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 9. So underline this, if this is your Bible. John 12, I'm reading verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus. They came not for Jesus. They came not for Jesus' sake only, but they, but that they may see Lazarus also, whom he has raised from dead. So the people came, they didn't come for Jesus' sake, but they came that they would see Lazarus, whom Jesus have raised from the dead. Verse 10, look at it, verse 10. But the chief priest consulted that they may put Lazarus also to death. The chief priest consulted also that they may put Lazarus back to death. Look at, look at Lazarus who just died. By God's intervention, Jesus raised him up from death. The chief priest consulted that they will kill him second time. <laughs> Have you seen this kind of wickedness? Have you seen? And you see, that is what the devil is doing. That is what the enemy is doing. When God deliver you, maybe from a sin, the enemy will be fighting and be fighting to make sure he get you back in the same sin. He get you back in the same weakness. He get you back in the same problem. He get you back in the same thing. The chief priest consulted that they put Lazarus back to death. Let them kill that Lazarus again. Hello? Why? Why? Look at, look at the reason. Because that by the reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Because of Lazarus, many, many of the Jews went away and believed Jesus. That is the reason why tonight I have come to speak to somebody that your salvation is important, that you need to guide, you need to guard, you need to protect. Because the enemy always wants you to fall and to repeat Repeat, repeat. Why? Because when you fall, it brings a reproach to the kingdom. When you fall, instead of men coming to the kingdom, they will go back. When you fall, it becomes a shame to the kingdom. Because the resurrection of Lazarus was a gospel. The resurrection of Lazarus was a gospel. And because the people saw Makali Kotokopa, so what really happened? The Jewish left and they believed in Christ. They left and believed in Christ. And the chief priests have to consult men. He said, we didn't come for this Jesus, but we come for the same Lazarus that have died, that was resurrected. Let's kill him the second time. Let's kill that Lazarus the second time. That the Jews that have left will come back. So you see how your life become a mirror. You see how your life become a light. You see how your life become a salt. So it is very important that you will know how to effectively confront and conquer repeated spiritual battle. Because every one of us, we are facing repeated spiritual battle. Write it, write it. Every one of us, we are facing day by day what they call repeated spiritual battle. But we need to confront this repeated spiritual battle. Every day, devil come with this. You, you escape tomorrow. He come with the same thing to see whether you will fall for it. And in all this, as a child of God, as a believer 
in Christ. What do we need to do? How to do? How to confront and conquer the repeated spiritual battle? How to confront? How to conquer the what repeated spiritual battle? We're going to look at three or four things, but it's going to take long. I pray that God will give us the grace to finish this message today. Hallelujah. Number one, it is very expedient to discover our spiritual roots where we are connected. <laughs> it is expedient to discover our spiritual roots where we are connected. Very important. Very important. Very, very important. It is important that we discover our spiritual roots. It is expedient that we discover our spiritual roots. Where we are connected. If you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And you read verse 17. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we read verse 17. And the Bible say, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He is one spirit, not two. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You have to know that you have one spirit with God. Why do I say this? The revelation of knowing that you have one spirit with God, the revelation of who you are is the cure, is the cure of what repeated spiritual battle magada baraba the revelation of who you are the revelation of who you are connected to is the cure for what repeated spiritual battle why do i say this that every problem that comes to your life is a fate question they came to ask you for your identity. And that is the reason why you find out today there are a lot of identity crises. There are a lot of people that does not know how they look. There is a lot of people physically, they are beautiful. They are elegant. But spiritually, they don't know their left. They don't know their right. They don't even have a clue of who they are. And this kind of people, devil himself, will always come to use repeated spiritual battle to bombard them. What you, what he came with yesterday, today, he's telling you, let me tell you something, you are nobody. And many of us, being believers, and that is the reason why, sometimes they say, I am too harsh, I am not harsh, because I expected you as a believer to know that you are born again. <laughs> I expected you as a believer to know that you are and no more the person you was before you gave your life to Christ. So that is the reason why it's not what everybody cry for. It's what you cry for. Not what people run helter scatter for. It's what you run helter scatter for. Why? Because the revelation of who you are gives you the cure, cure of repeated spiritual battle. Cure. You know what they call it? Cure. Cure. Somebody can be healed, but you see cure. You don't play with that. Cure means don't come back. It will give you the cure. Cure. Permanent solution. Permanent solution. So it is important we know that. So it is expedient to do what? To discover our spiritual root where we are connected. And I say something here, that the revelation of who you are is the cure. 
Why do I say that? Revelation of who you are. I want to show you something in the book of in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 19. Proverbs 27, verse 19. Very important. Proverbs 27, verse 19. Proverbs 27, verse 19. Look at what this scripture says. Proverbs 27, verse 19. It says, As in water face answered to face. As in water face answering to face. So the heart of man answer to man. So, <laughs> so the heart of man answered to man. As in water face answered to face. So the heart of man to man. Heart of man to man, heart of man to man, until that revelation of who you really are, down on you, be downloaded in you, until the veil is being taken away from you. Hallelujah. Until that veil is being taken away from you, you will really not know who you are. In Christ Jesus. And that is the reason why. That the enemy will be coming with the repeatedly. Or repeated spiritual battle. To bombard you. To bombard you. To bombard you. And to get you. And somebody will tell me pastor. Why do you normally say that? We were studying two days ago. Or three days ago. Where we say that what the devil came from the beginning. In the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, the devil came with what they call this distraction. They call it comely. And we said that the devil came with what they call fear. Distraction caused them their, robbed them their place in life. And fear robbed them their relationship with God. Now, even when God was calling them, they were afraid to respond to God. So listen very carefully. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 19. Proverbs 27, 19. So when we say that it is expedient to discover our spiritual roots, where we are connected. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. If you are with me, let's go to the book of John chapter 15. We are reading verse 5. John chapter 15, verse 5. The Bible says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. For without me, you can do nothing. For without me, you must recognize, you must discover where you are connected. You must discover your spiritual roots. You, that is the reason why you'll be a man who will come and boast to you that is a, a child of God. Because you'll be a man and discover his spiritual roots. Who be a man he knows where he's connected. And tonight I'm asking you, do you know where you are connected? Do you know your spiritual root? Your spiritual root is in Christ. Your spiritual root is in Jesus Christ. He said, I abide in you. He that has abided in me and I I in him without me. You can do nothing. So you have to know my root is in Christ. I am connected to Christ. I have one spirit with Christ. I have one spirit to, with the Lord. He that is joined to the Lord have the same spirit with God. That is your connection. That is your connection. Let me show you another connection. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Very important. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. And the Bible says, You are complete complete you are complete you are complete in him which is the head of principalities and powers look at it you 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 that is listening to me you that will listen to this message after you are complete in him bible didn't say you are incomplete bible say you are complete in him who is the head of principalities and power. So, quote me, 
If you are complete in the head, you are the head. Are you hearing me? You are not the tail. Sister, I pray tonight by the power in the revelation world that you will discover where you are connected spiritually. You will discover your spiritual roots tonight. Spiritual roots tonight. In the name of Jesus, you will be connected to your spiritual root, which is Christ. In the name of Jesus, your root is Christ. I am coming. Somebody will ask me, Pastor, why do you say that my root is Christ? Let me give you the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Follow me. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I am reading now. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. That is your root. I said that is your root. I'm speaking to somebody. That is your root. That is your root. That is your root. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are, for we are his workmanship. Created in Christ, my roots, my roots, my roots. We are his workmanship, created in Christ, created in Christ, created in Christ. So, good news, it is being proven that your spiritual root is in Christ, where you are connected. It is being proven that you are created inside Christ. Karabalaba. Not foot, not foot, but root, root, root. Your spiritual root. It's in Christ. We are created in Christ. Amen. So that is where you are from. That is where you are connected from. That is where you were born. That is where you were created. You were created in Christ. That is your spiritual root. When you know your spiritual root, you become a movable in life. When you know your spiritual root, you can effectively confront and conquer. Oh God, when you know your spiritual role, effectively you can confront and you can conquer. But I decree and I declare tonight, power to conquer rest upon you. Power to confront rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, every repeated spiritual battle in your life, today I declare you a winner. I declare you a winner because you are connected to the head of principalities and powers because you are connected to Jesus Christ. You are created in Christ Jesus who is the head of principalities and power. That is where your root is. That is, let me tell you, your root is not from your family. Come out of there. Come out of there. That is the reason why you see having more problems. That is the reason why you never change your thinking. Because you still see your roots where you come from. Can I tell you something? You are still seeing your roots where you come from. But if only you can change your mind today that your spiritual root is in Christ, not in your family. Your spiritual root is in Christ, not in Ojirika family. Your spiritual root is in Christ, not in David's family. Your spiritual root is in Christ, not in your family, but in Christ Jesus. And that is the only way you can conquer. Can I tell you something? Bible say that the name of Jesus has been given at the mention of his name. It didn't say at the mention of the name of your family. The name of your family have no power. In fact, the name of your family is the weakest name I have ever known in my life. The name of my family is the weakest name I have ever known in my life. But the name of Jesus is the most powerful name I have ever had. It is a name that has been highly lifted up. At the mention of his name, every knee begin to bow. How many times have you called your family name and the mosquito will die? How many times have you called your family name? and the fly will run away but when you call the name of Jesus demon must bow when you call the name of Jesus tongue will confess I have come to let you know today that your root is in Christ don't be afraid don't be afraid your root is in Christ it doesn't matter what you are saying it doesn't matter what you're going through your root is in Christ in the name of Jesus that is your root. That is your root. That's why Bible says that we might be rooted and grounded in him. I decree and I declare from today, you will be rooted and grounded in your roots. I speak with authority. I speak with power. You will be rooted and grounded in your roots. 
rooted and grounded in your roots rooted and grounded in your roots rooted and grounded in your roots in the name of jesus oh my god my god my god that you may be rooted you may be grounded where in your roots my god when a man or a woman is rooted and grounded in his roots nothing can uproot him nothing can move him i decree tonight you are untouchable because you are the roots to jesus you are unstoppable because you are connected to the roots that cannot stop you are unmolestable because you are connected to the roots that cannot be molested in the name of jesus Mm. Oh God, help me tonight. That is the root you are. I didn't finish that. Follow me. Because many of you that have been sitting down and be crying and be saying, Oh God, I'm nobody. I am I want to show you something. Because the root that you are connected is not the root that cry, he is nobody. The root you are connected is not the root that cry, I am not. The root you are connected is the root that boldly declare, I am the way. Mm. I am the truth mm, and I am the life. When they were talking about, nobody could be able to say I am. Read your Bible very well. Nobody could be able to say I am. But when Jesus appear, the word I am stand. I am stand. When Jesus died, he began to say you are. He began to say you are. Before, when you read the Bible, you're not seeing those words. I am and you are. I am was referred to God dear hey my god help me in the old testament much of i am was referred to god i am he he is he is but when jesus came jesus stand and say i am the way i am the life and i am the truth when jesus died and he had begotten us what happened he changed and begin to say you are you are you are you are you are oh my god i wish somebody can get me tonight which means uh, the death of jesus has fixed you up the death of Jesus have fixed you up. The death of Jesus have fought for you. The death of Jesus have made you well. I decree and I declare tonight, anywhere you are, your eyes will be open. You will discover your spiritual root tonight. Which is Christ. If you are not born again and you are listening to me, you will discover your spiritual roots tonight. If you are born again and you don't know your roots, revelation to know your spiritual roots will come upon you tonight. Wisdom to know your spiritual roots will come upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Know you need your spiritual roots. And look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, for we are, look at that, for we are, for we are, his workmanship, I love that, for we are, not we will be, we are, his workmanship, created in our roots, created in Christ. Jesus, unto a good work, which God has ordained that we should walk in them. I decree that from today, you will walk unto a good work. You will manifest a good work. You will speak a good work. You will do a good work. In the name of Jesus, by the power of resurrection, I decree and I declare, you are created unto a good work. You will walk in a good work. You will dwell in a good work. You will speak of a good work. In the name of Jesus, never again will the word of any man, never again will the word of any woman to bring you down to bring you down to nothing you are who god say you are you are who god say you are god say you are created in christ unto a good work you are god workmanship created inside christ 
unto a good work. You are not created unto a cry cry work. You are not created unto sad sad work. You are not created unto complain complain work. You are created unto a good work. You are not created unto backsliding backsliding work. You are not created on unto unto praising the devil and glorifying the devil. You are created unto a good work. And I see you functioning in a good work after tonight. I see you manifesting good work after tonight. I see you speaking good work after tonight. In the name of Jesus. Why? Jesus did a good work. And because of his good work, the enemy, enemy, they, they, they did not come for Jesus. But because of the testimony, because of the glory, because of the testimony of what he have done, the devil want to do what? To cover that testimony, to kill Lazarus the same time. Every sin. Every spiritual battle that want to repeat themselves in your life. From tonight, I command them to receive fire. Every satanic gathering that want you to repeat. That want to repeat a spiritual battle in your life. That want to repeat a spiritual manip manipulation in your life. That want you to backslide. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the earth will open and consume them. Let the earth open and swallow them. In the name of Jesus, every assignment of the enemy to draw you back, every assignment of satanic and demonic priests that want to put you back to death, that want to draw you back to sin, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command that power to be destroyed. I command that power to be destroyed. I I banish that power. I banish that power. I command that power to be abolished right now. In the name of Jesus, he said, put him back. They want to put Lazarus back to death. So that because the people have left them to follow Jesus. Jesus Christ of is, is this not pure wicked? The people have left. Do you think that when you invited somebody in church and the, the person starts following you to church, you think that devil is happy for you? That is the reason why. When you, when you start following somebody up, stop. Even if the person is discouraging you, even if you go to the person, he say, oh God, I can't come this week. Sister, go next week. Make sure you call the person. Keep on praying for the person because there is a battle the person is fighting you don't know. There is a battle the person is fighting that is bigger than him. But I decree and I declare tonight, any battle that you are fighting that is bigger than you, tonight, by the power in the name of Jesus, the Lord shall deliver you. The Lord shall deliver you. The Lord shall deliver you. Every unseen battle from the pit of hell, every unseen battle from the high men of order every unseen battle that have been troubling you trying to repeat their weapon in your life every sickness you have been healed from trying to repeat themselves in your life every sickness you have been healed from trying to come back in your life in the name of jesus in the name of jesus right now i command the agenda to be destroyed i command the agenda to be destroyed I command the agenda to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Repeated spiritual battle. Repeated spiritual battle. The man say, hmm. the chief priest consulted that they put after Lazarus have died, they want to kill. Hey. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Don't play with that salvation. Don't play with what you have. Don't play with it. After Lazarus have died, Jesus, everybody knows the story of Lazarus. After four days of that death, he was thinking, smelling in the grave. And Jesus went and woke him up. He came out of the grave. He lose the bandage. He lose the grave cloth. And Lazarus began to live. Chief priest that's supposed to be happy that somebody that is dead was raised. People that are supposed to be happy that young men and young women are getting born again. 
People supposed to be happy that our sons and daughters are repenting, leaving evil to do good. They get angry because they know the people are leaving them to believe Jesus. I speak with authority today and I'm going to stand on the area of healing because I want to close. If I start what I have here, I can't do, I can't, by tomorrow I can't finish. I want to close. I'll go on part two by tomorrow by the spiritual grace of God, which will starting from 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. tomorrow. I want to start declaring from people that have been sick, people that have been having recurring problems, people that have been having recurring dreams. People have been having recurring sickness. I don't know what they have been repeating himself in your life spiritually. I don't know what they have been repeating himself in your life, in your destiny, in your family, in your ministry, spiritually. Today, by the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, today marks the end of it. Hey, I said today marks the end of it. Every sickness you are being healed from that enemy is repeating enemy is repeating it in your life today i command that sickness to dry up in jesus name every recurring problem that the enemy is trying to repeat in your life in the name of jesus i command it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus, everything, anything, enemy is trying to reoccur or to repeat in your marriage. In the name of Jesus, I command the earth to open and swallow it now. Anything, enemy is trying to repeat in your spiritual life, in your spiritual life, any fiery doubt. That enemy is trying to throw at you, trying to throw at your spiritual life for you to go back to who you used to be. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the fire of God to consume the hands of satanic power, to consume every agenda of the enemy, to consume the counsel of the enemy. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, any man under the sound of my voice, every negative dream that enemy have been repeatedly bringing on your way, I decree and I declare, today marks the end of it. 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 In the name of Jesus. I don't know the feelings. I don't know the feelings that God have healed you from. I don't know the feelings that God have saved you from. I don't know the things that God have saved you from. But all of a sudden, you see those things trying to sneak in, trying to come back. Listen, right now, I want you to pray. It is your prayer you are going to pray right now because I'm about to close. I'm, we are, in the next three minutes, we are going to close. I want you to take at least one minute, 30, minute, 30 seconds. I want you to go to God in prayer. Those things, you know that enemy is trying to repeat them in your life. Those things, you know enemy is trying to repeat a spiritual battle in your life. Spiritual battle in your marriage. Spiritual battle in your destiny. Spiritual battle in anything. Anything enemy is trying to repeat. Is it sickness? Is it hunger? Is it anxiety? Is it depression? What is the enemy trying to repeat in your life? Hour have come. Is it sin? Is it thought pattern? Whatever it is. I want you to go to God in prayer right now. You have one minute, 30 seconds, and I'm going to pray for you again. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Hey, Father. Anything the enemy is trying to repeat in my life, 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 in my destiny. I command it to be destroyed tonight. I command it to be destroyed tonight. Anything enemy is trying to repeat in my business, in my family, in my ministry, in my spiritual life, my God and my Father, tonight I command it to be destroyed. I command it to be destroyed. I command it to be destroyed. To be destroyed. Every thought enemy is trying to repeat in my life, in my destiny. 
I decree and I declare tonight be destroyed. Tonight be destroyed. Tonight be destroyed. Father, arise and let them scatter. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy is trying to repeat in your life tonight, the Lord will arise and put it an end. Why did the Bible say? Bible says, surely the affliction will not rise up the second time. You don't play with the Bible, you know. When Bible say a thing, because it's connect to some things, it says, surely. Affliction will not rise up the second time. I don't know whatever that has been that affliction physically, spiritually, and otherwise. Affliction in many forms. Affliction in many dimensions. Affliction in many ways. Trying to repeat themselves in your life the second time. Affliction of failure. Affliction of fear. Affliction of anxiety, affliction of depression, affliction of sin, affliction of sickness, affliction of cancer, affliction of, of, of lupus, affliction of, of COVID, affliction of Delta, affliction of any form of sickness, diabetes, in the name of Jesus, arthritis. In the name of Jesus, affliction of fear. In the name of Jesus, I stand by the word of God. Bible say, you shall not rise up the second time. In the name of Jesus, you shall not rise up the second time. In the name of Jesus. He said, for affliction will not rise up the second time. Thank you, Father. Because I know affliction will not rise up the second time in your life, in my life. As I declare this scripture, that whatsoever be the plan of the satanic chief priest, whatever be the plan of satanic chief priest, every consultation of satanic, satanic chief priest, to do what? To recapture you back. To recapture you back. Every plan of the enemy, to recapture you back. To bring back the sickness. To bring back the death. Today, may the Lord scatter them. May the Lord scatter them. Let their gathering be scattered. 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 May the Lord scatter them by fire. Scatter them by fire. In the name of Jesus. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 8, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. Look at what he said. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. Isaiah 8, verse 10. Isaiah 8, verse 10. He said, Take counsel together, and it shall not stand. Take counsel together, it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. I stand on this word and I decree and I declare as many that have spoken a word to repeat affliction in your life, as many that have two counsel together for affliction to repeat in your life, for failure to repeat in your life, for anything to repeat in your life. Today I decree and I declare it shall come to naught. I decree, I declare it shall not come to pass. For the Lord is with you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. I soak and cover you with the mighty blood of Jesus. As you have prayed tonight. As the word have gone ahead of you. I decree and I declare. The hand of God be wet upon you mightily. In the name of Jesus. Mightily. In the name of Jesus. Remember the roots. You are connected. Remember the roots you are from. Remember your spiritual root. From your spiritual root, no weapon. That from, from your spiritual root, you are complete in Christ. 
from your spiritual roots, you are complete in him who is the head of principalities and powers. Remember, tomorrow we will start in number two to fight that battle as God. For many of you that is joining now, please go and rewatch this service. Go back. Take your time. Eat the word. Take the word and you will see what God will do in your life. Don't fail to share this message for others to know that how they can effectively confront and conquer repeated spiritual battle in their life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. 8 p.m. tomorrow will be live for just before you go to bed. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be a banner over you. May the Lord be a banner over you, over your family, banner over your destiny, over your marriage, over your children, over you are going out and you are coming in, over you going to bed. May the Lord be a banner over you. In Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. You have a blessed and lovely night. Sleep well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.